Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We left off where we were working on making a React version of our task list, and we had put in some change handlers, but they didn't actually do anything. It had this weird effect where when we typed into our, uh, in our text fields, nothing showed up because the text fields are being set by what's in the state, and we hadn't closed the loop to make it so that the values uh, are put into the state. So we can do that. Remember that when you change state, you don't say this dot state equals, you call set state. And we pass set state uh, an object. Okay. And the object I want here, now it turns out this object that we pass in is kind of, uh, I almost want to say it, it's merged with the existing state. So our original state has four values in it. If down here I only set one of them, the other three will be maintained. Now because I'm using a fairly new browser and we have support for some of the newer features of JavaScript, things that came out in ES6, I want this value right here that we were logging to actually be my key. And I can do that by putting it in square brackets. And then I need the value, which is e dot target dot value. Okay, and sure, I don't think we really need the logging anymore. So, what happens when we refresh this? And I type now, I get my output. Okay, the way that we would expect. I still don't have a login button, uh, that still crashes. Maybe that's the next thing that we should work on. So how would logging in function here? Um, in many ways, it should happen very much like what happened with version 3. I don't think I need the uh, version 3. No, actually, I will want that in, in a bit. Uh, what about our version 3 JavaScript? Okay, what did login do here? Well, it grabbed the username and the password. In fact, how about we just snag this code right here from our version 3 and paste it here. Uh, we have a login. We'll give it an event. I don't think we're going to be using the event, but we'll give it the event. Now username and password are no longer going to be taken from elements like that. When we're doing this with React, remember these things are now inside of our state. So I have login name and login pass as part of my state. Login name, login pass, and just like with version 3, we're going to make calls to our API, things that are sitting on the play side. Now, remember version 2 of, of the application used AJAX calls, but those AJAX calls responded with HTML. Version 3, the AJAX calls respond with JavaScript. So, for example, login calls validate, which responds with a JSON of either true or false. Okay, it's a fairly simple response. The main thing is that it attaches a username and a CSRF token. Uh, and down here for getting the task list, this would respond with the JSON for our sequence of tasks. It turns out that that will actually probably work for us. So uh, right now, all of our tasks link to the task list three, and I'm going to run with that uh, because getting back that JSON is far more flexible. When we got back to HTML, that's specified exactly how things were going to be displayed. Now that we're using React, React is handling how things are displayed. So we want to get back the JSON. Uh, all of this for the data that's going in should stay the same. Now what we do with that data is going to change fundamentally. So in version 3 we had to hide the login element and uh, and display the task list element and, and change things with messages. Uh, that's not what we're doing here. Okay. Um, now the message part, this should probably stay somewhat 
consistent. So we have a login message here. You know, that could definitely be part of our state. In fact, I'm going to, because this state is now getting a little bit longer, let's break it up over a few lines. So how about we make a login message and a create message, both of which are empty strings to start with. And we can indeed create a span that has, actually I don't even know if it needs the ID, but you know, we'll leave it there. It does need to have a body which is this dot state dot login message. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, paste it down here, comma there, not there, create message, create message. Okay, so we have the ability to display messages. Um, and what I want to do here for the login failed is make it so that that is the message for our login message. So I want to create, set the state to be a login message of login failed. Okay. Um, because I'm setting the state, the component will be rebuilt, and when it is, this will be displayed there. Uh, for these elements, I am going to comment that out for a bit because I want to run this and see the see that if our Ajax call here with fetch is happy, and make sure that if I type in an incorrect password, so if I type in a correct login. We actually expect, uh, oh, um, token i in JSON at position zero. Okay, so it's having a challenge pass, parsing the, uh, the JSON. Our response did not have valid JSON in it. We'd have to, to look at that. Um, oh, a bad request. The, whoops, local, something is being mishandled in our creation of where we are posting to. Version four, login, the fetch route, validate route is not being set up properly. Oh, um, that would probably be because in version three, we had some variables at the top that pulled out those values and we haven't put them in version four. Let's try that again. Okay, this is why we test. So the login should do absolutely nothing, which is uh, if it's a correct login. However, if it's an incorrect login, we get a login failed there. Awesome. Okay, so that is the behavior that we'd want to see. Um, I'm going to stop, stop here. We'll come back in the next video and work on what code we put inside of here. So what happens when the login is, is correct? It turns out that while that was a, a small change pre-React, uh, this is a somewhat larger change here because of the, the way in which our React application needs to be structured. And there's some structure that we don't have in here right now. So we'll come back in the next video, we'll add that structure, and we'll try to get things so that we can uh, actually do a login and display the tasks.